Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. So everybody hasn't seen Puffy in the video in quite some time. Uh, it's because last March he came down with a respiratory infection and uh, it was quite the ordeal and took uh, uh, basically three people to uh, restrain and medicate him. Um, uh, you know, the, we don't know since we're taking all sorts of precautions against COVID and stuff, uh, we don't know where the respiratory infections came, but we had a few of them floating around the lair and Puffy got a very severe one uh, last March. You know, we had to medicate him. He didn't eat for like six months and he got over it and was you know, you when you have to restrain these animals, they lose your trust and confidence. And, you know, he just refused to eat all summer long and was really looking thin. And we were just really resigned to the fact that we were probably going to lose him. Uh, but since then, he's been eating like a champ again, his normal, back to his normal self. And, uh... You know, I'm very pleased that we're able to maybe feature him. Maybe he'll uh, he'll cooperate and eat uh, uh, for everybody. I see he's a bit excited, which is good. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Puffy's back, uh, pretty much on track. Um, you know, we get so attached to these animals that can bite and kill you and they don't really understand you're trying to help them out so it was uh, it's, we're really really thrilled that uh, Mr. Puffy has shed his infection and is back uh, chowing down the rats uh, I haven't been power feeding him I've been giving him uh, one a week uh, last week he actually got a medium this is a small so uh, he seems to be a, a happy camper. He's getting heat from below and uh, uh, from above. So we're just going to shut this now and let Puffy uh, do his thing. Um, and I'll tell you, um, uh, restraining uh, these animals and you know trying to help them is not only very dangerous, uh, but very stressful for both, uh, you know, myself and everybody involved. Uh, Lori, Lori, my, uh, my associate Dan, uh, who helps me out periodically. Right now, Dan's not coming over because Omicron is so prevalent. Uh, and uh, we limit our exposure to people, but uh, um, it took, uh, even though he wasn't feeling well, he was uh, very difficult to, uh, to restrain uh, and to get a cannula down there and give him antibiotic orally. Um, I prefer to use oral antibiotics to injectables because they last longer in the system and you don't have to give them so often, especially with the snake's a little bit slower metabolism. If you inject uh, uh, the antibiotics that I have intramuscularly, you basically have to give them an injection every other day. Whereas, if you inject uh, uh, the antibiotic into the food item and they're willing to take that, um, that dose will last uh, three or four days, 
um, and stay in their system a, a little bit longer. So the injectables are metabolized faster. Um, you have to be very careful which antibiotics uh, uh, you give uh, because some of them will, will also cause kidney damage. Um, so uh, it seems that Puffy's on amend. Uh, I'm not going to disturb him, but there is a large pile of poo back there, but he's been jealously guarding it, so, <laughs> so you know, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, it, it's so far back that if I try to grab it with the tongs or, or something, I am generally within striking distance, so, um, you know, again, because of COVID, the ERs are swamped. Uh, they don't need to see somebody come in with an exotic snake bite, although I have antivenin for it. A puff adder bite is something I'm just not interested in in having uh, at any time, uh, pandemic or not. So we'll uh, shut this again and let Puffy do his thing, and uh, we have other animals to, uh, to feed. So Puffy's... Uh, uh, on the mend, and uh, certainly his appetite is back to normal. Um, and we're very, very happy that we're able to uh, feature him in a, in a video again. So Mr. Milos, uh, Macrovipera Schweitzeri from the Greek Isles, he started off eating frozen thawed just since he was a baby. And I've had him since he was a baby. Now be careful because he does have this bad habit of launching himself out of his cage. Um, so, but he's recently gotten stubborn and will only eat live mice. So I fed the, some of the Atkis some live mice um, and what I did is with the scent of mouse in the room, um, I got him to grab and hold this frozen thawed mouse that I thawed in a plastic bag. Normally I've been, uh, thawing the food items in hot water, but that seems to wash a lot of scent off the mouse in the process and some snakes just refuse to take it that way so I've been putting them in individual plastic bags and soaking them in hot water until they're thawed and if it's a pit viper I make sure it's nice and hot so the, the scent stays on the animal and it, uh, it is more ap appealing to the uh, stubborn snack that, uh, that otherwise would just use a frozen thawed mouse as a pillow like Mr. <laughs> Milos does. Um, you know, Mr. Milos has your typical viperid cocktail of, of proteases and things that cause local tissue damage as well as hemotoxic um, manifestations. Uh, I do stock antivenin that would be effective uh, against the bite from Mr. Milos. Um, because the hospitals have been absolutely swamped with COVID, you know, we don't want to take a bite. So, and Mr. Milos has been very enthusiastic jumping out of his cage when we open the door in anticipation of food. Um, I re really haven't, uh, his cage is quite dirty and needs to be scooped and cleaned. So maybe after he eats, I'll use the long handled, uh, scooper and, uh, uh, try to get the vast majority of it out. Um, and this way, uh, his cage is a little bit more presentable. Even changing the water dish can be a problem with him because 
literally, he has jumped out of the cage uh, uh, when I've opened the uh, door thinking that uh, food was there. And usually then I toss the live mouse off to, into the corner and I shut the door quickly and just walk away. I take no pleasure in, in you know, having to feed off live mice at all. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the reason why he's getting tricked is because one of the live mice that uh, I would normally give to him uh, decided it was going to bite me and I dropped it on the floor and it scurried under a cage and uh, I have to uh, uh, hunt it down and retrieve it. Uh, um, so yeah, I really don't work, like working with live mice um, and I don't stand around and watch the mouse die after bitten. I just uh, come back a little while and make sure that uh, um, the snake has uh, eaten the mouse and it's not live in the cage. So we'll shut the door since Mr. Milos is uh, chowing down and we'll continue with the uh, other chores in here. And I sort of put one over on Mr. Milo's, which is good because mice are expensive. They're about $2.60 a piece for a hopper live locally. Um, and, you know, I get my frozen thawed mice uh, at a much better rate, you know, about a, a tenth of that. So um, it allows me to... Uh, uh, to conserve funds, which are uh, really sort of short right now because the ad revenue from the YouTube videos on the Viper Keeper channel is down uh, quite a lot. So um, the more views, uh, the better off we get, the more quality and content I can provide. 